Will America choose socialism or free enterprise? Many have tried to characterize various economic crises as the failure of free market economics, arguing that government intervention is necessary. But is it true? America's founders understood that because government rests upon force, we need to keep the use of force in society to a minimum. Lawrence W. Reed is the president of the Foundation for Economic Education. There's not an example in all of history where unlimited government has led to a happy result. It leads to tyranny, it leads to a looting of the public treasury, and it leads to, uh, in many cases, national bankruptcy and ultimately extinction. The alternative is a free market. Just what is a free market economy or capitalism? Dr. Walter E. Williams is a professor of economics at George Mason University and the author of Liberty versus the tyranny of socialism. A free market economy means that each of us as individuals are, have the ability to engage in peaceable, voluntary exchange without interference with other, by other people. Overwhelmingly, exchanges, as long as they're free and voluntary, result in both sides benefiting. Free market economics has gotten a bad name in the last several years, but according to many theologians and economists, the system rests on simple biblical principles. Dr. E. Calvin Beisner is the author of Prosperity and Poverty. We start with the Eighth Commandment, you shall not steal. Now that assumes it, it rests on the foundation of a right to private property. And a right to private property is empty if there's not control of that property that goes with it. And control of that property then indicates that you can do with it what you please so long as in the process you are not harming someone else. Unfortunately, the faulty premise that caring for the needy requires government wealth redistribution schemes has become dominant, persuading even many well-meaning Christians. Americans have largely lost their sense of what a right is. And these days you find people claiming they have a right to fill in the blank just about anything. People say, well, we have a right to health care or we have a right to decent housing. Well, what does that really mean? That is, if you have a right to something that you did not earn, that means that somebody else must not have a right to what he did earn. Uh, we think of rights as simply, if you want something bad enough, you can claim that you ought to have it. And if people don't give it to you voluntarily, then Congress should get it for you. Uh, that's a confusion of rights with wants. When God gave Moses the commandment, thou shall not steal, I'm sure God did not mean that thou shall not steal unless you got a majority vote in Congress. If you were to ask God, is it okay to be a recipient of stolen property? He will say that's a sin as well. Now, when the government gives somebody some money, it represents their taking what belongs to one person and giving it to another to whom it does not belong. Now, that is theft. I think it's laudable and praiseworthy to reach into your own pockets to help your fellow man in need. I think it's despicable and worthy of condemnation to reach into somebody else's pockets to help your fellow man in need. Jesus constantly talks about the importance of charity, about generosity, giving someone the coat off of your back, or walking two miles with them, you know, when they ask you to walk one. Jay Richards is a senior fellow at the Discovery Institute and the author of Money, Greed, and God. The idea of government coercion and redistribution of wealth is fundamentally incompatible with the biblical idea of charity and so it's it's very important for Christians not to make that that simple mistake if you want people to be charitable and to act charitably they have to be able to do so in a voluntary context in a free market system people are free to make their own voluntary exchanges but in a socialist system the government assumes more and more of the responsibility for providing for people's needs the reality is, is that we need to be concerned about the ways in which socialist thinking uh, is creeping into the general public and also into the churches. A lot of Christians who never imagine themselves being Marxist or socialist nevertheless think in more or less Marxist categories and don't realize that. In addition to resting on biblical principles, 
history seems to demonstrate that free market capitalism is the most effective system for taking care of all people, including the poor. When was the last time you heard somebody uh, writing out a personal check to the Department of uh, Health and Human Services? People write them to the Salvation Army, to the Red Cross, to their church, because instinctively they know that those private organizations do a better job than government. The average American is allowing himself to be led by groups that have left leanings toward a manifestation of socialism. When politicians are promoting socialist ideas, they oftentimes are saying, hey, look, the wealthy, they have so much. Why don't we take from them to, uh, to help you? So to me, it's, it's, it's one long slippery slope. If you don't understand that private property is the source of our liberties, I, I can't make a big distinction between this kind of socialist and that kind of communist. But when you're thinking about the question, does the Bible teach socialism? Well, definitely not. Those who lust for power uh, love having people more dependent on the government. In fact, communism is making a move in Latin and South America right now like never before. Six countries are now what we would call communistic countries. Health care reform cannot wait and it will not wait another year. In one of two ways. Nations either choose to grow or they choose to decline. That's the crossroads that America is on.